and welcome once again to the Nerdy Basement. My name is John Ramos from um, here from Puerto Rico, and I here have the director of The Wicked Ones, the sequel of The Wicked One, and here we have um, one and only Tori Jones. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thanks for having me. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, Tori, how how does it feel that you you made your first your first film, and then um, a couple of years later, then you go ahead and um, kick it in with the Wicked Ones uh, as a sequel, and then it's very interesting because the release date Sally is not on Friday the thirteenth, but it's going to be on September thirteenth. So, how does it feel that you you're going to have a sequel coming out um, from your story? Uh, it's great, man. I'm I'm excited for people to see this uh, next installment of the of the film. We actually shot it back in 2019, uh, towards the end of 2019, and then of course the pandemic happened yeah. uh, at the beginning of 2020. So it was a process uh, to get it done and and to get it premiered and with distro and everything. But we're excited that it's finally uh, coming out, and hopefully people enjoy it as much as they did the first. Uh, I think it's I think it improves on a lot of different things that uh, we couldn't do in the first because of just budgetary uh, constraints. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping people dig it. That's awesome. So I, I've been, been, been hearing this a lot. Um, a lot of the films have been filmed during 2019 and then 2020 comes in, the pandemic hits and it affects um, everything. Right. So um, in, in your side, was the film already completed uh, before? Like, you know, like uh, what I mean is that you have already the master before the pandemic or you had the master when the pandemic hit? Um, so we were editing still. Like we we shot this film, I think, August and September of okay. 2019. And then uh, we, we started post-production shortly after that. And then, of course, everything happened. So we spent most of 2020 editing. Um, my editor's actually out of state, so I would travel there uh, with him to set in on editing sessions for the film. And then we ended up premiering this film in October of 2020, once it was done, okay. once it was completed. And uh, and then, of course, Distro sort of stepped in uh, at the end of that year. We had signed with Distro at the end of that year. Okay, that's that. At least that's the like you know the the great part about it. So I wanted to to dabble in a little bit. Um, pick your brain. So, in in the first film, we get this big antagonist, the the wicked one, and then here on this second film, we get a taste because I don't want to you know get into like a lot of uh get into spoilers, but uh we get into a little bit more behind the story of our main villain. The wicked one. So, what was your creative process to go ahead and dabble in a little bit more behind his story? So, actually, in the first film, there was more of his backstory that was sort of sprinkled throughout, and it was overly long. Uh, the film was, and we just ended up cutting a lot of it. Okay. So we had a lot of we had a lot of things that we actually ended up omitting from that film that we that with the crow thing which is sort of the backstory the the entity or, or whatever that is yes and then uh with this film one of the things that i wanted to do is i wanted to show i wanted to show that i wanted to look at it and say hey this is the reason why that this happened this is the reason why that he is the way he is and and dive into the psychology of that because all of this sort of the reason he is doing this is because you know he finds this this stone on his family's property and it something, I don't know, a native American spirit or uh, some sort of entity attaches itself to him from this, from this rock or whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. That's something that I, that I really did notice on this sequel. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of like scenes that uh, for me, it looked like the first one. So I was like, that means that the first one was much more longer than than I expected. So it's really cool that you got to use, you know, um, other footage from your from your um first film. So wanted to see, um, what I could say, will will this entity or or spirit or anything that we can call it, right? Um, yeah. will we'll see it much more in the future 
because I have a I have a question. I'm going to piggyback it on this. So okay. in this film, because the thing is that you have the first one is called The Wicked One, and then you have The Wicked Ones. But the, then what's very interesting of the sequel is that you have the main villain and then you have others um, inside in the mix. Are these others part of like this uh, entity that you're trying to present um, to the viewers? So the thing, the, the themes that we really wanted to sort of touch on in this was uh, how does violence inspire violence? And when we pick up, when, when the film opens and we show the two new villains, the, the, the new villains as children, it's right after that first movie has happened. So we see them inspired by what, they've heard the wicked one has just done right yeah and then we flash forward 10 years when they're older and they escape from uh they escape and return so they they not so much are uh driven by this entity as they're driven by the literal the wicked one's mythos and his legend themselves but in terms of seeing the crow creature again what i kind of wanted to say was that hey even though i think this story wraps that up that okay. colin miller uh the colin miller arc that if someone else stumbled up, uh, upon that rock there could be anyone could be a wicked one oh, you know? okay that's really interesting so yeah. um the, uh when we started this uh the first question was how how was the the filming process and everything so wanted to ask you because you did mention the pandemic happened and it was kind of like a challenge so tell us about your experience filming this um sequel were there some new challenges up ahead that you had to overcome um a second time while doing this one yeah it was uh it was definitely difficult it, and i've told a lot of people this this film is probably the most difficult film I've made um and there's a lot of different reasons for that but it just uh it was it would seem like it was one thing after the other with this film and and getting the first film made it, it actually took uh it took three years to get the first film made oh, so wow. to be able to with this film you know uh we had more money, we had a bigger budget, but there were still, you know, issues and, and things we faced um, on the film for, I mean, just technical issues or just, I mean, it, it was, it was, yeah, it was really tough. Um, so more money does not equal less problems for sure. <laughs> making, making these things. Um, but, you know, it, I think it was worth it and it all worked out and, and we got to bring the wicked one back to life. That's that's great. Um, so by any chance, do you have like any like uh little story or little like gimmick that happened while on set? Oh, there's a uh, there's so many things that happened on set. Um, are we talking about like a funny story? A or... funny story, or you know something that that you're going to take on the heart. You know that it's like I'm gonna remember this forever. <laughs> um. Probably, I think there was a lot of character moments. That okay. those were, there was, um, and you can see it on the bloopers uh, when the Blu-ray comes out in November. But um, the bloopers show some of my favorite moments. There was a scene where we were uh, two actors were in a cop car driving a cop car at night, and we were behind the cop car, okay, like, kind of pushing on the the bumper, making it move a little bit, and. I guess we were pushing too hard or something, but they were literally like bouncing around and they were like, it ruined like 20 takes. It, it's, it's super hilarious. And we couldn't, once we lost it, we couldn't get it back. So we were laughing so hard. And then uh, there was another moment where an actor uh, improv a line that is just the most hilarious thing. And you literally hear me off screen and the bloopers like lose it. I'm cackling over in the, <laughs> the corner. I'm, I mean, I'm chuckling out loud because it was the most goofy, goofy uh, line that I've ever heard. And it, it was, yeah, it was ridiculous. I, I got to say, because the thing is that I love to ask this question because there's always different stories 
you know yeah. that 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 a, a director or an actor says like oh so this happened and then this other thing happened and it's really great to see that besides the fact that you we are um you guys are creating a, a new story or bringing us a new a new story and creating a new film you guys have fun at the same time so that you know i think that's the one of the main reasons that that people get into cinema or people go to the movies right so right. Wanted to tell to to ask you because I saw that in this film you have a lot of the cast of the original cast members come in. Uh, I think it's the two main cast members of the first one. Um, how was it going back, um, working with them and plus adding a bunch of new characters? Because in this one you have a lot of characters coming back in. So yeah. how how did it feel working working with them once again? Uh, it was great. It felt like sort of a, a family reunion in some aspects. Originally, the film was different. It was going to be uh, centered on new people. Okay. And, and what we ended up doing was through rewrites and me and my co-writer were kind of looking at like, what are, what can, what can we do here? And then finally we just settled on like, okay, let's just bring them back and let's have a, a continuation of, the first the first story and, and really wrap up those arcs is what we wanted to do okay that's that's great um i, I really did see that in this one you do see like a uh, like a like an ending of like their their story um aiming for a future one so i want to pick your brain once again i okay. have a i have a scene in this film that that it, it it's really intriguing to me because me being somebody that likes horror films you know, see, seeing sometimes that your main character, or the main villain, get off character because of something, it's it really intrigues me. So there's mm. this one scene that you have the wicked one contemplating on his mask. And it's like, I think it's the first time that we see him without the mask. Mm -hmm. And then he is like, uh, I don't know, he he seems like he's contemplating like his decisions or 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 life. I really don't know, you know, but for me, it's really intriguing because it goes off his character that we've been seeing him from the first film to now. So yeah. can you break us, break down this scene, like give us a little bit more details of why that scene is in the film? Yeah, so basically the, the character of the Wicked One through this film is we sort of strip back sort of the the mythos and the legend and, and he, we see that he's conflicted. Uh, we see that he didn't just, you know, kill his family. He was conflicted when he killed his family. And we see that uh, when he's when he's dealing with that, he's battling himself, but he's also being drawn. And, and, and there's a line at the end where she, you know, she asks him, how does it feel not to be in control? And he says, oh, I never had control. And that sort of sums it up because he is literally fighting within himself and maybe he feels remorse for the things that he's done and maybe he feels bad for the things that he's done and he has become this symbol of all of this bad stuff this 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 horrible crimes but literally he's conflicted about it and it's not something necessarily that he has control over Okay, so Tori, I, I need to ask this because it's been it's been a question since I saw the first one, mm -hmm. uh, and then going back to the sequel, I need to ask this question: uh, yeah. Is your it was your main inspiration John Carpenter? Because the the city is called Carpenter Falls, so you know I just needed to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that's my Halloween is my favorite horror franchise. Okay. Um, uh, I I love the Halloween franchise. It is my guilty pleasure. Michael Myers is my so. There's a lot of inspiration there, and there's there's more than that. Like the town is Carpenter Falls. The lead character's last name is Curtis, which is a which is you know a, a nod to Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. The wicked one's patient number in the first was thirty one seventy eight, which is Halloween nineteen seventy eight. Um, there's you, just so many little nods in there to that. You sneaky, you sneaky. I, I love this. I love this because I, I, I gotta say, like when I saw the first one, I'm like, this, this Carpenter Falls. Wait, no. then I, I, I go ahead and I, I have a friend that he's a, uh, he, he, he makes movies as well. He's a director and everything. I'm like, wait, isn't, isn't, wait. I'm like, 
dude, is 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 the director of Halloween John Carpenter? He's like, yeah, why? Oh, now it makes all sense now. It was it was a funny moment with both of us, and I'm like, okay. Then when I saw the second one, I'm like, we're back at Carpenter Falls. This yeah. is interesting. I like this, and then um, it's really cool. You know, you I, for for the you're the first um director that I actually ask if there it was the inspiration behind the film because in this one you can tell but now mm-hmm. you're giving me more details behind like the little little nods in the film oh you just got me like uh, <laughs> sold there's I a whole it. lot there's a whole <laughs> lot more in there like if if you yeah if you know a lot of, of horrors of like horror facts and you go back and you watch that there's little things sprinkled throughout that people don't realize or people don't get so there's some okay. stuff in there for sure easter eggs for sure okay then that you're gonna make me watch the first one again and when the second one releases in in september 13 i'm gonna go ahead and rent it and watch it again and again to see those <laughs> nods so yeah. I, I i got it to you know not going into details not in in, in regards of the ending of the film but mm-hmm. my question is because i know that you mentioned that the idea of the sequel is to bring in uh future wicked ones mm-hmm. but are we going to see the original wicked one in the future or you're just going to put that like keep it hidden for a couple of like maybe future wise if there's like a third or fourth installment and and keep him like maybe to the future and just bring in new new um characters or go more in depth into this mythos that you're presenting to us so my thought process on it is is in terms of this first go around with the wicked one that i feel like these two films wraps that up uh um, okay wraps it up as far as for our protagonists as far as for like the good guys in terms of the og wicked one colin miller that character um i don't know what what i have been told by people who are way more successful than me is that i need to reboot this thing probably with a different title and um reintroduce the wicked one it's kind of like um you know that like they did with art the clown from terrifier like art the clown was in two different films before terrifier Mm mm-hmm and then, and then with Terrifier, it blew up. So that, and and actually, some of the people that told me to do this worked on the Terrifier films. Their producers on. It. So um, that is something that I am interested in is doing it on a bigger scale. Okay. Uh, with a much bigger budget and re reintroducing the character of the Wicked One and saying this is a clean slate. You know, if you this is taking place in an alternate universe, even or however you need to feel better about it, like. This is the same Wicked One. It's still the same Colin Miller, but let's re- reintroduce this. Let's reboot it and let's do it just on a bigger scale. And I think that when and if that there is another Wicked One movie, that that will be the route that we take. Okay, that that is actually great and amazing because again, um, I did enjoy the film. Uh, there were there were a lot of like great scenes that I really was, um impressed i had a lot of fun uh and it was really interesting in this second one because like like i mentioned it was for me seeing the two new characters the two new villains i was like what what's the whole idea and you giving us that explanation is really really great so tori uh, i got another big question for you so i know that you have you're awaiting for the release of this of this film in a couple of days on september 13th that's next week uh well no, next next week so whoever's watching us go ahead and rent it. it's going to be on vod available and as well there uh there is a special edition blu-ray that's coming out on november 8 2022 as well that you mentioned that there's going to be bloopers and i imagine special features as well so but now you're not only working on the wicked ones I imagine that you have other projects on the side or that you're making other things. So, Tori, the floor is yours. Tell us any details that you can tell us of any upcoming projects that you have. So, like I said, we shot actually Wicked Ones back in 2019. So mm-hmm. that's literally been three years ago. And it's it's awesome that it's finally been released. But since then, we've done two other films. 
Um, one actually releases this November. Okay. Um, on digital, and it's called They See You. And it is a Halloween coming of age story about these three outcast brothers, uh, young brothers who steal this mysterious board uh, from an oddity shop. And then they sort of open the portal to this other dimension and let these Halloween ghouls come through that sort of start to wreak havoc on their town. So I, I, I compare it to like a Halloween version of Jumanji. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and, and with, you know, other stuff sprinkled in, like the Monster Squad, stuff like that. So um, that we did that, and that, like I said, that releases uh, this October on digital, which is super cool. Um, and then we just wrapped back in early August, we just wrapped on uh, my newest film, Phantom Fun World. And Phantom Fun World is about a indoor theme park an indoor fun thing okay yeah where all this bad stuff happened and they're reopening it and then all this bad stuff starts happening again so um yeah there's actually uh you can you can check out the trailer to they see you on youtube and also there's a first look that we released on phantom fun world that's on youtube as well okay that's that's amazing so everybody that's watching us you heard you heard tori Go to YouTube, check out his new stuff that's coming in. And again, when you guys see it available on VOD, check it out because Tori's um, mindset on how to bring us horror is very interesting. And it's and it's I, I would say refreshing because it's kind of something different. So, Tori, I'm uh, again, thank you for for giving us this time. Um, to to you know pick your brain and let us in more on this world of the wicked one and Tori again uh, I hope that when the movie releases on September 13 everything goes amazing for your film like that you can go ahead and make five more or make, get to make that reboot and I wow. hope that your reboot gets a big distributor like that you can you can make your the reboot happen you know what I mean and um and really, thank you again for giving us uh, your time. So, Tori, can, uh, you can go ahead and tell us where the people can find you in social media. Okay. So, I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook at Official Tori Jones uh, on both of those platforms. And then our website is jonestownfilms.com. And that's got all the information about our film company and our films and where you can watch our previous work and what's coming up. So, awesome. jonestownfilms.com. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tori, for, for your time. And I remember, everybody, I'm going to keep mentioning it again. September 13 is the day like that you guys can see the sequel of The Wicked Ones. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.